All right, well, time now for our political panel and joining us here in the studio, Labor MP Josh Wilson. Welcome, Josh. And Coalition frontbencher Kevin Hogan is with us. Welcome to you too, Kevin. Why don't we start in the Middle East? Josh Wilson, do you support Israel's right to defend itself? And do you believe that Palestinians are being collectively punished? Well, Israel has a right to defend its citizens. All nations do. The terrorist attack by Hamas was abhorrent and unconscionable. Uh, we express our deepest sympathy with the civilians in Israel and we extend our sympathy also to uh, people in Gaza, to Palestinian people. You know, I don't think that there should be any uh, limit on sympathy and compassion in circumstances of violent conflict. Uh, that's why uh, Australia has uh, tried to show support obviously to Israel after that terrorist attack but now as the conflict continues to express our uh, our support for the observance of international law and humanitarian principle and the protection of civilians. OK, and that's largely in line with the 16-point motion, Kevin, that your side also supported. But do you see anything challenging in the language of Ed Husick and Anne Ali when they observe that Palestinians are being collectively punished for the actions of Hamas? Well, I think collectively punished is a, a, a statement too far for me right now. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot to unfold within this conflict. And, you know, just to reiterate, it was great to see um, a, the motion passed last week in Parliament, unanimously, bipartisanly passed, except for the Greens and a couple of Teals. But, you know, we've all seen the, seen the vision and heard the stories of what was a barbaric attack from an in terrorist organisation. So we obviously have a lot of sympathy for Israel wanting to dismantle Hamas mm -hmm. um, in the Gaza. And obviously there's infrastructure and there's pro things they need to take apart there so that Hamas can't launch something like that again. The Greens have earned the ire, Josh, of... Uh, Jewish communities, or at least its leadership here in Australia, the Greens have, for some of their statements made in the Parliament and I think from their own attempt to amend the motion passed by the Parliament. Amongst other things, the Greens sought to say that the Parliament stands... Uh, sorry, uh, condemns the war crimes perpetrated by the State of Israel. Do you see anything inflammatory in what the Greens are saying? Inflammatory to, you know, social cohesion? Well, I don't really want to have to answer for the position of, uh, of another political party. I, I think it's right, as, as you suggest, that it's incumbent on all of us to be voices for um, moderation, tolerance, to be peaceful in our conduct and our language. Um, you know, Mike Burgess, as part of our uh, intelligence community, has made that point. And we have seen in the past in Australia when, uh, when there are terrible events overseas, as was the case with the, the bombings in London in 2005, you know, we saw the Cronulla riots that followed shortly after that. So I, I think for everyone in, in public life, particularly in a country like Australia, uh, that is, stands outside of that present conflict, uh, we should do our best to, uh, to be models of, of tolerance and social cohesion. Australia shouldn't be a place that, uh, that ends up with um, divisions that exist in other parts of the world essentially playing out here in Australia. So anything that amounts to sort of taking of sides or pointing of fingers, I, I think is unhelpful wherever it happens. Kevin, we had Teal's MP Monique Ryan here earlier um, saying or opining that what she's heard from the coalition this side uh, might be inflammatory rhetoric around Middle Eastern affairs. What's your response? Oh, well, I dispute that completely. I mean, again, we are talking about the state of Israel having been attacked by a terrorist organisation. And I agree with everything Josh just said about we need to have a lot of, you know, the processes and language in Australia need to be, you know, very reasoned. But having said that, we saw the protest at the Opera House within 24 hours of this attack um, with statements and vision that we don't want to see here. But look, we, we on the Coalition strongly support the fact that it, the, the, the barbarianism of this attack mm. and their right to defend themselves and dismantle Hamas in Gaza, we fully support. And just finally on this, before we move on to one more topic, Josh mm. Wilson, <coughs> Kevin mentions the uh, flare-up in Sydney very early on in the piece that culminated on the steps of uh, the Opera House, yet we haven't seen much like that since. Do you think there is an observance by community leaders, by that I mean pro-Palestinian and Jewish in this country, that those kinds of scenes aren't to be defeat, uh, repeated? Well, we're, we're fortunate to live in a country that, that is uh, 
fundamentally a peaceful place, a place that uh, goes through democratic processes and resolves the things that we need to decide on uh, as a community in that way and does so mm. peacefully. We saw that uh, through the referendum. Uh, the Prime Minister today was talking about Australia as a, as a model of a multicultural society that has become more and more multicultural as time has gone on uh, and yet has maintained social cohesion and, and harmony. And so the key to that, I think, is uh, being able to uh, extend our sympathy and our condolences to people in Israel, uh, but to, to do that for people in Palestine, for people in Gaza at, at the same time. I mean, the circumstances in Gaza at the moment are, are, are brutal and horrifying. Um, we've seen some 3,000 civilians uh, die, a thousand of them children, in circumstances where uh, there hasn't been a supply of, of yeah. water and fuel, electricity and, and medicines. And, and so when Australia and, and other countries urge um, peacefulness uh, and, and restraint and, and the observance of humanitarian conduct and the provision of humanitarian assistance, which we've just announced, additional $10 million mm -hmm. of humanitarian assistance to Gaza. That's the kind of uh, responsible approach of a, of a peaceful nation like Australia. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the indicators are that it might get worse there before it gets better. Just finally, I think you've been keeping a close eye on this one, Kevin Hogan. Uh, diplomatic jobs for the boys. So former Labor Senator Chris Ketter got the job as Consul General to San Francisco. There were also some trade responsibilities for that. Uh, why is he not qualified? You seem to be suggesting maybe that he might be the John Barillaro of Canberra, is he? Mate, he's, Greg, he's more than the John Barillaro of Canberra. I mean, if we go back to John Barillaro, he was an ex Deputy Premier of New South Wales was an ex-trade minister and he was ridiculed and dragged through all sorts of mud uh, because he got given a trade envoy job in the US um, by the state government and by a lot of Labor MPs. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris, with all due respect to the guy, and I don't know him, so I say sure. this with all due respect, but he has never been a senior member of the government, had never had a ministry, um, has never had a trade-related portfolio or job, has been a union delegate for 30 years and now a Labor staffer. So this is jobs for, boards, jobs for mates. Um, I think it's a very disappointing decision. The Austrade had gone through a process to allocate the job to a very well qualified person. Penny Wong said these type of these type of uh, things would never happen with the new government. Well, here we go. All right. Uh, quick response. Don't know if you know all the particulars, Josh, but uh, qualified, Chris Ketter. Late, late on a Thursday, a lot of mayonnaise on that from Kevin. Uh, <laughs> you know, look, uh, diplomatic appointments get made that include people who have been in, in political life before. Chris Ketter is someone I do know. He's an excellent fellow. He was a senator here. He's got a range of um, professional experience that's relevant. Um, we have decided to rebalance the way that those appointments were made because we think mm. that there shouldn't be uh, a sort of a, a heavy handedness uh, or a disproportionate amount of, of political appointees. Uh, those, that proportion of appointees doubled under the Morrison government. Right. I don't remember hearing Kevin get uh, hot under the collar about it then. So. OK, that is a response. We're going to thank both of you, Josh Wilson, Kevin Hogan. Thanks so much. Uh, Bruce Wolpe, we spoke to him earlier.